we have to give medicine our 100%. And the problem with that is once we do that, we sacrifice a lot of things. And a lot of people, you know, we understand about the sacrifice that med students and doctors go through, but we don't talk enough about it, right? Like not just family, but mental well-being, literally our physical health. What is up everybody? It's your boy Tin back with another video. And I just want to say thank you for waiting. Um, it's been a while. Residency has been hectic. Uh, so for you guys don't know me, I'm Tin. Currently a first year resident uh, doing a family medicine program here in California. Today's gonna be more of a spontaneous video. I just want to talk about this topic. And it's uh, been happening for the past, I think week and I just been too busy. Um, I think this is a perfect time for me to just kind of talk about this topic, suicide, suicide awareness, unfortunately. So this is something that happens. Um, I just noticed this, everyone was posting on uh, social media um, about this first year resident doctor, Dr. Jing Mai. And I'm assuming this, you know, all her, uh, some of the, like the event is public. Uh, it's been posted by her, her, uh, boyfriend uh significant others and her close friends so just giving that fact i assume that it's be okay to talk about uh her events and and use it as an uh, a way to bring light to this topic so this is one of her friend uh on on twitter here uh and dr nguyen uh, said dr jing mai took her own life after fighting against depression insomnia and feeling inadequate as a first year resident physician. Uh, and he talks about the residency working condition needs to be reformed and that the loss of his best friend was preventable. Yeah, so all, all my co-interns uh, were posting about this. Um, I don't know her specifically, but I do know the program that she was at. Um, and this video is not gonna be talking about uh, reform for residency. It's not gonna be talking about all the typical, you know, hard working condition that residents endure and some of the abuse that residents face. Today I want to talk essentially just about just my own thoughts on it and I've been thinking about this for, for the past few days. Um, again, this is unstructured, just my thoughts. Usually I have an outline for everything I talk about in, on the YouTube videos, even though it might not seem like it, but today I just want to share my thoughts with you guys about this topic. So. I found out about this post. This is her, her, her uh, significant other, uh, kind of making it public. And so I'm going to talk about it and go through the post. And they do have a GoFundMe for her funeral. If you guys want to go donate, just go to his page or just search up uh, probably her name or the hashtag forging. And uh, it should lead you guys to the GoFundMe page if you guys want to donate. Um, so, you know, he talks about, he shares some pictures with his. Uh, for his last time with so this picture apparently is the last photos of them together and uh you know she seems so happy and she's uh, the caption that he's have is depression can be hidden so well you're like you looking at her you, you wouldn't be able to tell that she's struggling with with any depression or thinking about ending her own life it's crazy so yeah you guys can just go through this post and um it's heartbreaking you know uh i'm fortunate enough to not have had anyone close to me um, commit a suicide or take their own lives and I, I thank God for that because I can't imagine you know someone that I know someone close to me uh, just just that happening to them this post by AMWA doctors I guess it wasn't by Dr. Laura Vader but this post said one doctor dies by suicide each day in the US. So when I read this, I was like, there's no way. I I didn't believe the statistic. So I, I went and searched it up. And then I ran to this Medscape article. Um, and it literally said, this is what it said. Uh, One doctor commits suicide in the US every day, the highest suicide rate of any profession. The number of doctor suicides is 28 to 40 per 100,000 people. So this is more than twice that of the general population more than twice um 
So I tried to search up the source here because I, I didn't see anything about like 354 it. So it took me to this page by American College of Emergency Physicians, and here's what it said. Each year in the U.S., roughly 354 physicians die by suicide. So they take that number and divide it by 364 days, so about one suicide per day by physician. And that number is mind-blowing to me. One doctor commits su not just like death by illnesses or anything, not just like death by accidents or, or you know, getting hit by a car or going under procedures or anything. It's literally just death by suicide. One doctor every single day. So today I want to just, so my thought is, so this is something that Chris Williamson said on his uh, Modern Wisdom podcast. You guys haven't, uh, this is something I listen to and I like this guy, he's very good. Uh, he, he, so he points out the fact that each of us, you know, when we when we focus on something, right? We we try to be really good at one thing. Something gonna give. Um, there's no way that you can devote one hundred percent to something and you know have energy, have time, have the strength to devote that same amount of energy, that one hundred percent to everything else in your life. And unfortunately, as medical students, as you guys know, a lot of my watchers are. Uh, medical students or in the pre-med or in the medical fields we really want this it's very competitive to get into medical school right and once we do get into medical school it's a rigorous process we gotta really want it to get through all the curriculums to get through all the testing like every day where you have to study for six eight hours a day for one single test for like weeks on ends and it doesn't end you do this for four years you take two major tests just to get into a residency that you want and then that residency itself is going to determine what you want to do for the rest of your career. And then you have a step three that you got to take during residency. So all the stuff that we, all the big hurdles we got to jump through because it's pretty much like a make it or break it kind of thing. Once you're in med school, you come, you have debts that you got to pay for. And if you don't get the residency, how are you going to pay off that school debts after the four year? And because of this mentality, because this this like high stress, high pressure, like situation, we have to give medicine our 100 percent and the problem with that is once we do that we sacrifice a lot of things and a lot of people you know we understand about the sacrifice that med students and doctors go through but we don't talk enough about it right like not just family but mental well-being literally our physical health right and this is what i found as my intern year started like before i was like in med school right second first second third fourth year i was able to put you know, going to the gym, like put my physical health and mental well-being, you know, kind of like up there. I was able to kind of maintain it. And this is not, I'm not like saying this to this on anyone who cannot do it, who cannot go to the gym. But this is just, I had to sacrifice things for this, right? I didn't get, you know, the highest scores in, in classes. I didn't get the highest scores on my step one or step two. I was in the 90 percentile of those things just because I knew that, you know, I kind of value my physical well-being and mental well-being a little bit more you know i didn't do a lot of research or extracurriculars outside of medicine and the thing is when you want to get into competitive specialty a lot of med students have to do these things they have to study extra they get put in the extra work that extra time of studying so they can ace that test so they can ace that step one and step two they get to spend extra time doing research outside of school they gotta spend extra time doing extracurriculars to help with the community and i'm not saying these are bad thing at all these are perfect because these are what makes you good doctors but unfortunately you only have 24 hours in a day and you can you need a certain amount of sleep so when they focus on these things they just might not be able to you know take care of themselves they might not be able to go to the gym they might not be able to you know meditate or kind of unwind and get rid of the stress and i see that when i started residency because i literally i went from like six days in the gym you know uh, maybe one one and a half hours uh, uh during my like medical school and then i was cutting down to like five days a week for uh third and fourth year i had to find a new workout program and now in residency i had to cut down to four days a week and i'm barely getting that in and then, so back to my original point in that you have, you know, when you've, you, 
you have when you focus on something when you really want something and you give it your 100 percent you have to be willing to sacrifice other things in your life like for me i just can't uh i'm not having enough time to practice my my piano my music anymore i'm not having enough time to produce music or making you know cinematic youtube videos or you know taking pictures uh that i love to do as a photographer I just can't do any of those things as much anymore. I'm not learning. I'm not able to progress in my piano skills or my producing music producing skill because I'm spending a lot of time and, and effort towards learning medicine, towards becoming a competitive, competent doctor. And this is just reality. And the problem is that we end up sacrificing our physical health and mental health with this. And so I think for the point of this video for, for, for me and my message to, you know, all you guys watching or listening right now is just to realize that, you know, in medicine, we really want something. We really want to give it 100%. And sometimes our mental health take a back seat, um, our physical health take a back seat. And maybe just kind of reevaluate where you are at this point in your journey sometimes you know a lot of us we, we want maybe you really want to do a highly competitive specialty but you are the kind of person who just cannot handle stress well or you just haven't learned how to cope with stress well enough yet you haven't learned that capability that ability to handle stress um uh, adequately so maybe kind of take a step back maybe rethink that that high stress uh, specialty rethink that extra um research project that you're gonna take on i mean you don't do any at all sad thing yeah so i think that's what i have for you guys um someone's so close to me, like it's like so close in like vicinity to me i just can't believe it it's one one suicide a day it's crazy anyway guys so that's why i have for you guys thanks for watching um if you guys take anything from this video just please like know that you can't do everything um as type a even type you know, some like type b students too but as medical students and as you know resident physician as doctors ourselves we just we had to learn to be perfect for so long we had to learn to do, like be at 100 110 percent for such a long time undergrad med school even in residency when you want to get a fellowship just or just you want to be a really good doctor but you know i just reevaluate what your priority is in life um maybe ship that 100 percent to you know cut it down to 85 90 percent spend the extra 10 percent on your physical or mental health so that's why i have for you guys it's your boy 10 um make sure you subscribe and like this video comment below any tips or tricks that you guys have for dealing with you know uh, stress and and all these problems you know get help if you need it until next time